we report a case of a 69-year-old patient with a laparoscopic radical prostatectomy due to prostate cancer. He is reoperated on the 11th postoperative day due to a rectal perforation. A diverting colostomy is performed and a urinary catheter is placed. On the third postoperative month, a retrograde cystography and magnetic resonance imaging confirm the persistence of a rectorethral fistula. We perform a transfisteric repair with the York Mason procedure. Prophylactic antibiotics are given intravenous just before the procedure and a cystoscopy is performed to identify the ureteric orifices and to introduce a ureteric catheter through the fistula into the rectum for later identification. The technique. The jog mason procedure is one of the several techniques described to repair the rectourinary fistula. It is a transfinteric posterior approach. The posterior anal canal and the posterior rectal wall are sectioned in order to widely expose the anterior rectal wall where the fistula's orifice is. The urinary and the rectal defect are closed in different layers to prevent the fistula recurrence. Finally, the posterior rectal wall and the sphincters are carefully closed. The patient is placed in the prone jackknife position and the buttocks are spread wide with adhesive tape. A parasacrococcygeal incision is made extending to the anal verge. Subcutaneous tissue is divided rich in the gluteus maximus in the proximal verge and the sphincteric complex in the distal verge. The anal sphincter is then divided by layers and absorbable sutures are placed at this time to provide proper alignment of the segments of the sphincter at closure. We separate the internal sphincter from the external sphincter. We reference both of them with some more stitches. Now we divide the external sphincter. and then the internal sphincter. Here we can see the elevator Amy and again we place some stitches before dividing the muscle. The posterior rectal wall is then opened along the entire incision length. And the fistulous tract in the anterior rectal wall is widely exposed. The fistulous orifice and all the surrounding inflammatory tissues are excised. The ureteric catheter is removed and a dissection is performed to separate the rectal wall from the urinary tract. The fistulous defect is closed in three different layers with absorbable monofilament sutures. The urotelium is the first layer we close. Now we start closing the rectum wall in two layers. In the first place, the muscular wall.
And finally, we close the rectal mucosa. The posterior rectal wall is closed in a single layer with absorbable sutures. The paired sutures of the anal sphincter are then tied to reconstruct the sphincter, adding some more stitches. A red and drain is left. The subcutaneous tissues are closed with absorbable suture and the skin is closed with non-absorbable monofilament stitches. Radiological examinations confirm the absence of rectourethral communication. The diverging colostomy is then closed on the seventh postoperative month. One year after surgery, the patient remains asymptomatic without fecal incontinence.